okay so today we'll start uh, the product development stages so as i told you there are uh, three different stages in product development the first one being understanding the opportunity so we saw in the uh, last class there are different stages in understanding the opportunity also so we'll look at the the first part of understanding the opportunity how do we actually identify a good opportunity to develop a new product so that is going to be the discussion today so here as i uh, told you that there are four stages so develop a vision is the first part how do you develop a, a new vision for a new product or a vision document for a new product suppose i want to develop a new product what should what should be my starting point or how do, how should i convey my vision to other members in the team or to if i want to discuss with others what will be the binding document which will tell me oh this is what i want to develop and these are my vision for this product so that is basically known as the vision develop a vision so at the end of this uh, stage what we'll be having is a a mission statement so we'll try to develop a mission statement which will actually tell you what is the what is the mission you have in developing this product or why you are doing this how you are planning to do this and it's in a very preliminary stage you don't have much data but these are basically your own understanding about the product requirements customer need etc etc and then later on you will go and verify this through different stages like market opportunity customer need etc etc but initially you tell oh this is what i am going to do so that is basically the mission statement to be developed for making a new product so we'll uh, <coughs> answer these questions okay you can see what uh, albert einstein uh, said so making the problem clear is more important than finding a solution so once your problem are very well defined clearly understood you can find a solution so product de de development also you should be very clear what you want to develop then you can actually develop it without much of a difficulty so we will actually look into these uh, things in mission statement first what to develop i mean you want to develop a completely new product or you want to develop a completely new technology or you are looking for modifying an existing product through different process of uh, design basically redesign or uh, going for a variant design or whatever it is so what is that you want to do that is basically what to develop and then we look at how do we decide how to use a particular technology because there are different technologies available for doing something so can i use a particular technology or should i develop a new technology so this can actually be answered by something called technology forecasting or s curve how do we forecast the future of a technology and then see whether you can use the technology or you have to develop a new technology so that is basically known as s curves and and how the s curves can be used in new product development and then we will see how do you answer the questions that you have about the products and then come to a mission statement so this is known as technical questioning and developing a mission statement so you ask many questions to yourself or to others to understand the issues in the product and then use all this information and make a, a mission statement so that is basically the uh, goal of this particular discussion so we'll uh, see how to develop this mission statement based on technical questioning so that will be the discussion that we are going to have okay so at the end of this stage mission statement you will have a gate analysis so this is one stage and then you will have a gate analysis and you will decide whether to go or no go go means yes you can continue no go means no no your mission statement clearly tells that it cannot be done or it has a it is a different a difficult task probably we don't take it forward that is a no go statement and this will be decided by a upper management team you don't take the decision someone else will take the decision whether your mission statement is clear and it has got a future to move forwards so so we'll be having a intent to develop and finally you'll have a, a development plan at the end of this uh, mission statement so this is basically what we are going to discuss but let us see how people start developing new products so you might have seen many products coming into the market so let us see some of these um, uh, products which are uh, they call the most six uh, most important inventions
So you will see in day to day life you will see lot of need for pro new products and how people convert these into products in the market. So this is an elderly assist system because people who are very old they have difficulty in getting up, sitting and getting up and they find it very difficult and there are not many products available in the market. So these are some of the products people have developed by looking at the requirements of the customer or identifying the uh, I mean looking around and then looking finding identifying the needs and then developing products. You know what is these products? It is basically to prevent injury when they fall. So elderly people when they fall they break their bone and uh, if you break their your bone within two months you will be all right. But elderly people their bone growth has always stopped so it is very difficult to get it back or get it uh, cured. So you need to prevent the fall. There is no treatment is very difficult. So you try to prevent fall by developing different products for helping the elderly people. So all these are basically to help people, elderly people in their day to day life. This is for actually helping a person to lie down in the beds. Otherwise somebody has to hold them to lie down but this device helps them to Okay, so that is about uh, some products, how do you actually identify need for product and then how do you go about it. Okay, so the question is what to develop? So that is the first question you need to answer, what kind of thing I should develop? So should I go, go for a completely new technology or refine a current product or go for a product variant? For example, I uh, uh, discussed uh, this in the last class also one of the classes. Now you want to develop a, a scooter, will you go for an IC engine scooter or an electric scooter? Pardon? Electric scooter, right? What is the reason? Technology has moved from IC engines to electric uh, powered scooter, right? Now if you look at the uh, technology, any technology you take, you will see, you see a, a particular pattern in the technology uh, development. For example, you take uh, lights, light as a product, bulb as a electric bulb as a product. What was the first kind of electric bulb? Pardon? What do you call that filament type, right? Yeah. So, if I plot the filament technology against the time, suppose this is the time scale time and this is the light intensity of light intensity of filament uh, type bulb. When was uh, electric bulb invented? Pardon? 19th century ok. So roughly you can say 18th uh, end of 18th century or beginning of 19th whatever. Now when this was introduced the light intensity was very small ok. So the because the filament was very crude, the technology they were using for making the filament uh, burn was very very crude. So if you look at the intensity of the light, you will see initially when it started, it is slowly going up and uh, the, the change in uh, intensity was very slow over a period of time. Then lot of people start working on that technology and there will be a sudden growth in the technology of filament, uh, I mean uh, filament based uh, uh, electric bulb and you will see that the light intensity keep on increasing over a period of time because lot of people start working on developing new technologies, new filament materials and new ways of uh, uh, putting them in the, uh, in the what you call uh, air uh, uh, tight systems etc, etc. And then you will see that it actually goes up suddenly like this because there will be lot of people working on it and then lot of uh, development will take place and after some time you will see that there is a, a physics behind everything you cannot keep on increasing it beyond a particular level. So what will happen this will st slowly start maturing that means you cannot increase the light intensity of incandescent bulb for uh, this uh, filament bulb for forever at some point of time this technology will 
flattened. That is, you cannot use it for any more improvement is possible. This is the same case with IC engine also. If you look at the IC engine efficiency instead of sorry, instead of uh, light intensity, if you look at the efficiency of IC engine, the same thing when IC engine was invented, it was very low efficiency and people started working on it. A lot of uh, new things came up, lot of uh, methods by cycle changing and additives, uh, valve priming, etc, etc. Suddenly you will see that efficiency goes up and now what is the current efficiency of an IC engine anybody? Pardon? 4 0? Okay. Yeah, it is somewhere around 20, 30 percent is the efficiency of a IC engine. So, the people have been working for a long time in improving the efficiency, but they found that so from the initial 5 percent, it goes suddenly and now it is only a small change. So, IC engine, the efficiency has come down. Now, people found that it cannot be developed further. This is the case with all kinds of all technologies. Any technology you take, you will see that this kind of a, a growth pattern can be seen. That is, there will be a initial slow growth and then there will be a very fast growth of the technology and then the technology will start flattening that you cannot go beyond a particular value because that is the, the physics of the, the system. And what will happen at this point, you will see that a new technology will start coming up. So, when this is somewhere in the, in the flattening stage, you will see that something new will come up. So, after the filament uh, bulb, what was the next uh, type, type of bulbs came into the market? <coughs> what is that? Fluorescent lamp, right? So, when this is slowly slowing down, then something else will start slowly. This will go, it will coming like this and it will go. So, the, the bulb like tube light and all it came after the filament type 1 fluorescent lamp. Now, that also came to a stage where you cannot do much more than that. They came with a slim type without chalk, electric, electronic chalk, all those things tried to improve the efficiency of the uh, tube light. And they found that that is not a, not no more it is possible to improve it. So, what happened after that? LED. So, when this is trying to flatten up, then somebody will start with a new technology and it will go up. So, you can see this is the LED technology and this is the fluorescent and this is the filament technology. So, every time when a new technology comes up, there will be a stage where it is slowly progressing and then there will be a sudden growth in that technology. Lot of people will start working on it, lot of products will come out of that and then we will see that oh, now this technology has matured, it cannot go further, something else has to start. So, this is the way how all the technology happens and this is basically known as technology forecasting or we call it as a S curve or S curve technology. So, it is roughly you can say it is an S slightly uh, inclined. So, this is known as an S curve of technology. So, whenever you want to develop a product, you need to look at what is the stage of technology within the S curve. Is it in the beginning or is it in the rapid growth? or is it in the declining or saturation stage and based on that you need to take a decision whether you want to use that technology for a developing a new product or you want to go for a new technology which is coming up or emerging in the market. So, this is basically known as uh, S curve or the technology forecasting in order to develop new products. Okay. So, 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 to predict what technological developments can occur, so as to prepare to properly introduce the technology into a product and they typically manifest in a S curve timeline. Any product you take, take your uh, mobile phones or washing machines or whatever the uh, products you want to take, you will be able to see this S curve happening in the product technology. This is happening in the IC engine that is now going to the electric vehicle. In the electric vehicle also you will see that after some time you have, you cannot go beyond a particular level of efficiency for the system. Then we may have to look for fuel cells or whatever it is coming up, slowly something else will come up and the technology will move forward. So, this is something which everyone should understand when you are trying to develop a product, what is the level of technology currently and 
how you can leverage on the technology currently. So, this is what I already mentioned. So, product always follow a an S curve or the technology or the products follow an S curve and you will see that you cannot have much more much uh, improvement in that and then we will start a, a new S curve will start from here. Similarly, another S curve will start the technology will keep moving forwards. So, this technology will become obsolete, this will become obsolete and this will become the current level of technology. So, you need to understand how this technological change happening in the markets. So, this is already explained about the uh, different products. So, this is something like a camera, if you take the camera as a as a product, you will see the previous cameras were basically on the analog type cameras where you have the film and then printing and all these things. And later on we got new technologies and found that no more analog cameras are uh, feasible. So, we will talk with the digital technology. So, digital cameras will come up and then after some time we do not know what is the new technology coming up when the digital technology also come to a saturation then you will be getting another technology for new product. So, whenever you want to develop a new product you need to look at the technology what is the level of technology in the market and accordingly you have to choose the, the technology for the new product. So, that is the first point you need to keep in mind what technology we should adopt for adopt new products. Any questions on the S curve and technology forecasting? So, this is known as technology forecasting because it will be able to tell you what is the stage at which the technology is currently and what will be the next uh, stage of this technology. So, if it is in rapid growth you can show it will may grow for some more time and then when it is in somewhere in this region you should be careful not to use that technology for any product development. So, there is only one exception for this rule of S curve that is basically the microprocessor. All of you know what is a microprocessor? Most of your computers use a processor and that is basically a, a microprocessor. So, the microprocessor technology is still uh, going straight. It is not yet saturated because that is basically the, the amount of memory you can have in a size of chip, particular size of chip, what is the level of memory that you can stack. So, somebody predicted that this will also follow a curve then after some time it will actually saturate. It is still going straight and but people are predicting that in another 5 or 10 years you will see a saturation that you cannot build more cap capability for a processor because of the limitations in the, the chip and the materials. But if somebody come up with new materials probably this will go up. So, this is known as Moore's law that every 2 years your processor capacity increases by 2 times that is the known as the, the transistor density within a particular uh, size of the chip. There is only exception for the uh, S curve currently. Okay, so, let us uh, see what is the implication of this. So, you need to know the three scenarios of product development, the environment when the when you introducing a new technology, when the technology is rapidly evolving and the technology is topping out, topping out means saturating. So, these three stages you should be able to understand and based on these scenarios you need to take a decision or you need to plan accordingly. So, that is basically the need for a need in this case of product development where you are, we are trying to identify the technology to be used in the market in, in the product development and you should know what is the current level of technology available. So, if you want to des design an electric uh, uh, electrical uh, power system or a electrical uh, lighting system. Nobody will go for a incandescent or a fluorescent type, they will be looking for a LED technology only nowadays. But we need to know what is the future of LED technology, is it going to be there or it is going to be replaced by some other technology. To understand that you need to know what is the stage at which the technology is. Okay. <coughs> now, a simple approach to ensure that the product development team understands these issues, we go for a technical questioning and developing the mission statements. So, the technical questioning will try to answer these questions, what is the current technology, how is this technology is going to change etcetera, etcetera. So, we will see how can we use the technical questioning to develop a mission statement for a new product. So, what is mission statements? So, these are basically to get these things done. Yeah. 
So basically, we want to focus our design efforts. We want to have a clear goals, the goals to be defined. And we need to have the business case analysis, product schedule of task, etc, etc. So all these things can be done by having a, a mission statement. And this mission statement come from the technical question. So first we will look at how can we do the technical questioning and then how can we convert the answers of these technical questions to a, a mission statement. So when I when you do the ex, uh, lab experiments I used to ask you some questions. Basically some of them are part of the technical question. Why is it doing something? What is the problem with this product? Why it is not doing able to do something? So these are basically part of technical questions. I will be giving you a few questions, but that does not mean that those are, the, those are the only questions that you can ask. You can ask any kind of questions and then try to find answers that will form your mission statement basis. So, we will see what are these questions that we can ask. So, we will look at the technical questioning. So, it helps to gather additional information. The current understanding of the development needs to be questioned by asking the following questions and answering them not once but continually through the life cycle of the design process. That is if you want to develop a product you need to keep ask questions and try to find answers for those questions and then only you will have a clear idea is it a good effort to go forward with the product development. Assume that you are going to develop a, a new product. What product you would like to develop? Any suggestion? Okay, so this one we discussed in the previous class. Assume that you want to design a cycle, which is one which you commonly use. So, what will be the first question you should ask? Pardon? So, first question ask you ask is basically why do you want to do this, right? That means there is some problem with the existing cycle. That is when you are going to design a new cycle. Otherwise, you do not need to design. So, the first question you should ask is basically what is the problem really about? What is the problem that you are having with a current product or what is the problem you are facing without having a product? If there is no product, that is my problem. So, in the case of uh, bicycle design, how do you answer this question? What is the problem really about? Okay, yeah, the cycle chain comes out, no back support, okay, and uh, you will be exposed to sun and rain, right, you have to put some effort, there are so many problems with the bicycle, right, so these are the things which you should write, you are not going to solve all the problems, but you should see what are the real problems of using a bicycle. So, you will see that okay, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 many problems with the existing bicycle. So, that becomes a reason for you to start a new design. You know that there are some problems with the cycle, so I want to redesign. Fair enough, because you know there is a problem. You do not know about the commercial issues, technological issues and all, but you know there are issues, that is why you want to develop. If you are not able to answer this question, that means you do not know why you are going to design it. So, the first question you should ask whenever you want to design is design something is, is there a problem? What is the real problem with the product? So, that should be the, the first question you should be answering. Then, second one is, okay, what kind of expectations are there or desires are involved in designing this product? So, many people will be having many expectations. So, what is your expectation? or what are the expectations you are understood to have. For example, if you say that okay, you should be having a, you are saying that the cycle is having a difficulty because you are exposed to sun and rain. So, are you expecting this to be a car? You are planning to have a car instead of a cycle? No, that is not an implicit, that is not the expectation. The expectation is that can you protect this person from sun and rain being, remaining it as a bicycle, right. You are not going to make it as a four wheeler or you are not planning to make it as a fully electric, or whatever the implicit expectations 
that is basically driven as a implicit expectations. You cannot make it as a completely new product by to solve all these problems, then it becomes a completely different product, not a cycle. So, it should remain as a bicycle, it should be remain as a uh, one which is driven by the passenger, but can you provide the additional features? That is basically the implicit expectations or desires. Then, are the customer's needs, functional requirements, and constraints constraints truly appropriate? This is basically comes from this first question. So, you this you answered many questions here, but then you should answer, try to answer whether all these needs are really good, they can be really achieved, or what is the what are the constraints that may come up in this developing this product? That is basically the customer needs. Of course, you do not have too many customer needs at present, you have only very few. But are they appropriate? Are you looking at okay, that somebody is telling it should be protecting me from the sun and rain? Is that a good need or bad need? Is it a constraint in the development or not? So, that these are the things which you should answer in this question. The next one is more important. Is there any avenue for creative de design and development in this case? What are the areas where you can be very creative and come up with a solution? Is there a is there an avenue to make it very to make it a an innovative development exercise? And what are the areas which are open for creative design? So, for example, in the cycle, you are saying the chain coming out is a, a problem. So, probably you can come up with an innovative design of transmission where either the chain is not there or the chain can be it can be the, the chain slip can be prevented. That there is an area for you to be creative in designing the product. So, like that, are there any other areas? For example, there is no back support in bicycle. Is there a way I can come up with an innovative design to support the, uh, the passenger or back support for the, the, the rider? So, that is the avenues for creative design and inventive problem solving. And if there are none, none, that means it may not be a good product development exercise because there is not much nothing much you can do with the product. Next one is what avenues are limited or not open for creative design? That is, some expectations are there for the implicit expectations are there. So, you cannot really change that one. So, if you say that uh, the cycle somebody has to pedal or it has to be made electrical. So, some, sometimes you can say, no, I am not interested in electrical bicycle, I am interested only in a only in a manual one. So, the Avenue for converting to electric is not open. So, that is limited. You are not going for an open electric one, you are going only for a manual one. So, these are the avenues which are limited, which you cannot have a, a creative design. And then, what characteristics, properties must the product have? So, every product when you try to develop, you should have some expectations. Like it should be lightweight, it should be low cost, it should be very efficient. So, these are the things which are characteristic which the product should have, then only it will be success, successful, otherwise you will not be able to succeed in de designing the product. And again, must not have, so this is must have and what the product should not have ca some characteristics. That again depending on the product, some products will be having some specific things which you should not have, some products should have some characteristics which should have. So, we need to answer this question, what properties should the product have and should not have. What aspects of design tasks can be quantified now? So, can you make some quantitative assessment of some of the characteristics? For example, what should be the speed at which the cycle should be driven at a maximum, what, what is, should be the maximum speed? You can say, oh, it could, should be having a maximum speed of 15 kilometer per hour, that is my expectation and the weight of the cycle should not be more than 20 kg and the maximum weight of the person who will be riding cannot be more than 80 kg or expected to be around 80 kg. So, these are the things which you can quantitatively specify. So, that, that, that is the what kind of what, what are the design tasks that can be quantified at this stage. A very preliminary estimate you will be doing this again and again as you progress with the design. But these are the things we should answer. The next one is do any biases exist with the chosen task statements or terminology? 
this may be slightly difficult for you to understand because whenever we, I try to de design something, I will be having a, 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 a bias towards something. I already have something in mind. So, I am telling all this based on my bias. So, I will either say that I am a, basically a mechanical engineer. So, my design will be more of mechanical oriented. So, I am not, not interested in electronics. Somebody who is electrical or electronics based, he will be always looking for something as a electronic solution. So, is there any such bias exist in the chosen task or if at all there you just list that okay oh I want this to be only in this particular way I do not want this to be in a different way. So, that is known as do any bias exist in the design of the product. And the last one what are the technological and technical and technological conflicts inherent in the design task. So, what is the technological conflict? How do you define a conflict? What do you mean by conflict? Yeah, conflict is two opposing things, right? You want everything with high features in the mobile phone, but you want the cost to be very less, right? You want your display to be very big but you want your phone to be very small, easy to carry. So, these are technological conflicts. Somebody will say that I should have my display very big and my keypad should be very big so that I can easily type, but then they will say okay, my total size of the phone should be this much. So, it is a technological conflict. You cannot have both satisfied. So, can you identify some technological conflicts like that? For example, you want to have the life of cycle 10 years. Right, and then you say that the cost of the cycle should be, uh, the cost of the component should be, or the cycle should be less. But if you want to make the life more, you need to use better materials, good quality materials. Naturally, the cost will go up. So these things are known as the technological conflicts in the design of product. So is there any te such technical and technological conflicts inherent in the design task? So that is basically the the next question. So if you can answer all these questions or much more than this. So, these are the questions for the design team to think critically and restate the design stack in a more precise way for the project or subset currently under consideration. And the tangible result should be a clear statement of the design team's mission which is the mission statement. That is you try to answer these kind of questions not necessarily only these 10, you can have many more questions based on the type of product and try to answer all these questions and then see can you convert all these answers into a proper consolidated statement which we call as the mission statement. So, that is the purpose here. So, we will be developing a, a mission statement based on the technical question. I will take an example and then tell you how to do this, but let us first see how do we develop the mission statement then we will uh, take an example and then see how to develop the mission statement for a new product. Okay. <coughs> um, so, these are the things, but basically the mission statement will be something like this. So, you have a, a product. So, this is the product X. So, what is the product description? How do you describe the product? What it is doing? What is, what is, what is the purpose of the product? That is basically known as a product description. So, you describe the product, okay, a new uh, transport vehicle, manually driven, uh, manually driven cycle for short range commutation, commuting. That is basically the statement that you can have for a cycle. Similarly, you can write something about uh, the product. And then, what are the key business goals you have? You want to make some money, you want to serve a particular community or a particular group of customers and uh, what way, how much time it will uh, you expect this to take place these are basically known as the humanitarian goals and then what is your primary market who will be the primary customer for your products is it going to be the college going uh, uh, students or is it going to be the people who are going for job in the nearby uh, areas or who are going to be the primary customer for your products and then is there a secondary market? Secondary market is that market is that in addition to this, you can actually get some other people also buying your product 
that is basically known as the secondary market. So, who are the secondary market in this case? Secondary markets, current or expected secondary markets. And what are the assumptions in developing the products? These are basically coming from the uh, technical questioning. You will be having many things coming up here as the basic assumptions about the products. And then you have the stakeholders who are the important people who will be involved in the whole process of design, development, sales, purchase. Everyone is a stakeholder. Anybody who has got something to do with the product will become a stakeholder. So, who are these stakeholders in your case? Customer sets. And then avenues for creative design. What are the things which you can modify in the product with a creative or innovative design? Again, coming from the technical questioning. And the scope limitation. What are the limitations which you cannot change? Some of the things which are implicit and which cannot be changed. These are basically coming the scope limitations. So, once you write down all these things in a proper way, that becomes the mission statement for developing the new products. And this is the first thing we need to have if you are going to develop a new product or a modifying a product or a redesigning of product. The first thing we need to have as a document is known as the mission statement, which will clearly tell you what you are trying to do and what are the basic goals of this design process, who are the primary uh, uh, people who will be buying the product, what are the ways in which you can improve the product, all those things are listed here, so that becomes your mission statement. Okay. Any questions? All right. To take a, an example, just uh, quickly go through an example to see how do you do this. Uh, technical questioning for a new product. So, how many of you use this product? I asked this question earlier also. How many of you use this product? All of you, right? Is there anyone who has not used it? Only this, right? Okay. Assume that you, okay, how many of you felt that it is uh, not a useful product? Or is there a product pro problem with this product? Have you felt that there is a problem with this product? Pardon? Oh, okay. Don't get the shape. Then chance of getting cut, injured. Then oh yeah, left hand, left hand and right hand cutting is a difficult pro pro issue. Then what will happen to the nail when you cut? It will fly away, right? It won't, it won't be there. You have to search for it later if you want. Then, any other problem? Pardon? Too small, okay. Yeah. You have to apply some force, right? It may rust. And if it is, uh, if the nail, the, the blade is not sharp, what do you do? You throw it, right? You cannot increase the sharpness. So, all of you know there is a problem, right? So, do you want to redesign it? How many of you will be interested in redesigning it? Okay, good. So, we will answer this question first and prepare a mission statement for that redesign. So, what is the problem really about? How do you write? You can write many problems, right? Okay, the uh, it won't give you the proper shape, it won't give you, I mean the force is an issue, then a nail flying away is an issue, it may become rusted, force is a problem, you have to carry it. So, there are many problems. So, you can actually write down all those problems as the issues with the current product. You have multiple problems. So, for the time being, I will sim simply say that it is a, a clumsy operation. Okay, you can actually be more specific, but for the time being, I am writing it is a clumsy operation. The next question is more interesting. What implicit expectations are and desires are involved? What, what, what you can say in this case? What will be the implicit expectation of a nail clipper? If you have a nail clipper, what will be the expectation of a customer? 
long life that is more of a customer need but implicit that is implicit they don't tell you that it is it should be like that safe to use okay but another important thing do you want this to be an electronic product which actually will have a camera will look for the size of the nail and then apply the force and motor and all those things do anybody expect that kind of a product no so implicitly people expect this to be a manually operated one right they don't expect you to come up with a big machine and say that you put your nail there and then cut your nail that is not the expectation of the customer right so the implicit expectation is that it should be a manual one and it should be uh, it should not be very bulky and all those things are there so the main thing is that it should be manual one and you should be able to use it with both your hands simple you don't want this to be used by another person to cut your you can you should be able to use it yourself so manually operated a single person use is the simplest expectation of a customer so that is basically known as the implicit expectation okay it is implied it not need to expressly mean remain as a manual clipper that can be operated by one self so if you say that i have a new design where you need to have a 230 volt power supply you have to plug in nobody will say i am not interested in that kind of a uh, clipper right so these are the implicit expectations of a, a customer then are the customer customer needs functional requirements and constraints truly appropriate this actually basically you are on understanding many reports are there which people are telling that this is not good there is a problem with that and therefore i think that this can actually be uh, improved so that is basically the one <coughs> what's the time it's time to stop right so i'll just go through these questions and then answer then probably we'll discuss this in the next class again so this is important what avenues are open for creative design can modify all parts for sharing in device and uh, additional functionality to store and dump nails so you can have an additional functionality where the nails will be stored and you can actually collect it and dump it and what avenues are limited you cannot have a electrical power you have to be a manual one easy to use durable safe are the the product must have and it should not be bulky and then statistical sample size and importance rating you can say what is the approximate size of the nails what is the approximate force needed those things can actually be made and it must be a single person manual that is the bias you are saying that i am bias towards a manual one not an electrical one and what are the conflicts compact size versus large surface area for grasping and large nail cutting force so these are the expectations or the questions to be the answers for this question and based on these answers you can actually develop a emission statement so in the next class we will do one more exercise which we will be doing yourself for this i'll explain this we ask you to do in the class that will be for uh, this one so on 10th february that is on monday i think yeah monday right 10th so i'll be asking you to redesign a backpack okay so you have to come up with the answers for these questions what is the problem why what are the issues and uh, how do you answer these questions and based on that how do you prepare a mission statement so this will be a class exercise please come up with a, a a4 sheet and then you have to submit the answer in the class itself okay, i'll be giving you around 20 minutes to do this task and you have to submit so that becomes your uh, first uh, tutorial in the class all right okay thank you